we have breaking news this trade deadline day as Rockies GM as a villain makes a huge move bringing in three-time Cy Young winner six-time all-star Blake Snell from the Rays with Emerson Hancock going the other way now as a villain is currently addressing the press so let's join in live yeah, this is a huge statement of intent by the Rockies. Uh, you know, Blake is an elite level pitcher, and I am determined to drag this pitching staff of mine kicking and screaming into being a solid outfit, and Blake's going to be a big pup. What's that, mate? What do you mean you're injured? When? Just now. Ah, oh, for Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome to Season 7, Episode 4 here at the Colorado Rockies. And today we're going to be playing the Padres in a huge game at the top of our division. And, well, I made a move and it is a move oh, we are not mucking around. Blake Snell has joined us. He has settled straight in, has been injured for six weeks, his first start. Look at that, through two innings. Um... And then injured himself. Strained ab muscle. So it shouldn't be anything that affects him long term. It's just uh, it's just the game basically taking the piss out of me is what it is. But uh, $31.5 million he's on um, for the next two years. But as I keep saying, doesn't matter. We're only here for this season. So it, it doesn't matter what he's on. We, we, you know, we're allowed to do it. So we've done it. And well, we've got ourselves, I hope, somebody that is going to be uh, the leader of the bullpen. Or the leader of the starting rotation, I should say. Uh, in the final month or so of the season, moving into the playoffs. Now, it wasn't the only trade that we did. Now, I did obviously, uh, well, you may have not picked up on it, but it was Emerson Hancock who we gave up to, to get him in. Um, yeah, I mean, he was, he was, he just wasn't good, was he? Uh, I'm sure he'll go on and have a fantastic career, but it just won't be with us. And um, yeah, that's, uh, we don't have to worry about him anymore. He's not our problem. Now, as I said, there was one other trade that we did. And that was finally giving up on Junior Fernandez. We sent him off to the Tigers. Um, he just wasn't getting any better. He, he, he was one of these guys, and I find it a lot in um, in Alder Park Baseball compared to Football Manager, which is, of course, the other game I play quite a lot of. Attributes don't really seem to mean, to mean that much. Um, so, yeah, he wasn't performing. He never really did. He had one good year there, maybe a decent one uh, there but he just was get he just wasn't performing so we sent him away to the Tigers and in return we got in Jared Kelly now this is somebody who is uh, well you can see had a brief spell in the team <laughs> very brief um, but yeah just someone that I thought might be of use to us uh, so far that has proven incorrect he has been of absolutely no use to us he can bat though a little bit so um, maybe at some point he'll come in but uh, yeah it's We've got rid of one problem and got another one, it would appear. Now, another move that was made, and this isn't necessarily a permanent one, but we sent Saldana down to AAA. His ERA was up over seven. It was getting ridiculous. Um, so we sent him down. You can see he's gone to Albuquerque. He's doing okay so far. You'd expect him to. He's a very good pitcher. My hope is that... Um, He'll go down there, he'll do well, and then with the expanded roster, we can call him back up and just kind of see how he goes. But the difference between last season's 2.74 ERA and this season's 7.19, um, well, it's stark, isn't it? I mean, even the whip, you know, he was just a smidgen above one. He's approaching two this season. Um, I'm not quite sure what's happened to him, but uh, yeah, we sent him down as well. Now, as you would expect, we have had a few injuries as well. Um, We'll get into sort of exactly how the staff are looking, right, or how we got on. But you can see it's looking like the wild card again. Um, but the pitching staff, I think when we get everybody back, will look quite good. Feltman is out for three weeks. Uh, he, what's he done to himself? Herniated disc in his neck. Hopefully that won't affect him too badly once he's fit. Um, but yeah, so we'll get him back at some point. Kawa has, uh, he, well, he's had forearm stiffness. He's been out for a little bit of time, uh, and he was quite good for him. I mean, he was an all-star this year, so he should come back in at some point soon. So it's only three days, but we don't really know when he's coming back. Um, and, of course, Ty Tice is on his way back. Now, he had shoulder inflammation. He's been out for, for months rather than weeks. Exactly what condition he's going to be in when he comes back, we don't really know. We'll send him down to AAA for a rehab um, and just kind of see where he's at, but, uh, but again, potentially, he's been quite solid for us in the past as well, so, you know, there's a lot to come back, there's, there's four quite big pieces there, and, um, 
yeah, we, we can we can live in hope that uh, you know with Snell and Kawhi will come in. That'll be that'll mean Becker and this guy who we've called up because we're desperate. He's potentially again quite good, but he's not really done it for us. Um, yeah, I do. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, Snell is obviously a big piece, and he could do quite well for us. Uh, but that is everything I think caught up on. Yes, it is. If we go and have a quick look at how we've done since last episode. Uh, now we left off at the All Star break, didn't we? Yeah, the Braves, we won one of three against them at home, which is an ideal. You can see we had a bit of a high-scoring series against uh, against the Twins. And this one, we had a Vajeo Grand Slam. I think that was his second of the season. Now, that was against Blazozovic, who, of course, we had uh, at the start of the season. We traded him away, didn't we, to the Twins to get somebody. Um, so it was good to see, you know, he's still got that, uh, that Colorado loyalty in there. Um, otherwise, you know, it was a little bit hit and miss. We lost two of three against the Padres, which hurt. We got swept at home by the Mets, which hurt. Uh, LA came to town. We won three of four against them, so that was quite good. Um, we got swept in a two-game series against the Astros. St. Louis came. Also, we went there. We won three of four, which was good. We swept the Diamondbacks. It was good. Um, we went to LA, we won a series in LA, which had never happened. And in this one, we had another Vajeo Grand Slammer. So I make that as three Grand Slams uh, this season for Vajeo, which is, it seems a lot, I'll be honest. Uh, now, a familiar name on the mound for them as well was Ryan Helsley. Now, of course, he was a big part of our Toronto Blue Jays side. Um, but he has not quite had the best career in this particular uh, version of, uh, of history. Um, we went to Detroit, snuck two close ones there, and I think at this point, well, the, the gap to the Padres was three games closer, and I'm thinking, all right, they're coming to our place, this is our chance, and yeah, well, our hope was very quickly dashed, because we are trying to avoid a home series sweep against the Padres, and uh, yeah, so that's not great. Pitching, uh, now we want pitching stats for a start. I know you guys like to have FIP next to ERA, uh, and we can see everybody here, um, yeah, Barrera has been doing well. Barrera, Jones, and Kudros. Well, Kudros's form recently has fallen away. But those three are doing well. And I think, as I said, if you add Kawa and we add Snell to that, it's not looking too bad. But generally speaking, we've got rid of a lot of the, the trouble pieces. Uh, Kalina is someone who will drop down. Um, Jacob Wallace is someone who we've called up since uh, last episode. He's been doing quite well. Caught him up from AA as well. Um... But yeah, he's uh, he's been doing quite well, which is brilliant. Uh, and the other person that's come in since last episode is Gavin Hollowell. Now, he's somebody that, that has done well in AAA. Uh, and this time, it looks as though he might be starting to show that he could pitch at Major League level. Um, but again, I'm hoping Saldana will come back in. Feltman will come back in. That'll fill up those two spots. Um, yeah, and we'll just kind of see where we go from that. Rollison's back fit as well, but he's not having his greatest season. But hopefully, again, he'll come good when we need him to. The batting side of things, uh, Sergilio was injured for a while, as we know, but he's back in the side. Um, yeah, it's not going too badly. The one main change, I think, is that Vazquez, we've sort of officially relegated him to number two uh, to back up catcher. But you look at Jeffers, and an on-base percentage of over 400, he is doing very very well and Jeffers isn't the worst with the glove either so um yeah he has uh, he's officially taken over from Vazquez as that number one uh, number one spot quick look at the expanded standings we are in the wild card but it's very much it's sort of a five-way battle we can see between ourselves the Phillies Brewers Cardinals and the Lumber Kings um the Nationals and Giants are still roughly there as well and look at the Dodgers they are well, it's great to see, isn't it? At least, if nothing else, uh, we've finally been able to beat the Dodgers. Um, look at the batting averages. Eloy Jimenez is hitting home runs for fun. Um, yeah, if we can just sort out the pitching, and I think we're going some way towards doing that, we might be an outside chance this season, but we just we need to get ourselves into that playoff, or well, into the playoffs, and make sure we get past the wild card game, whoever that may be against. But uh, that's everything caught up on. We're about to try and avoid a sweep against the Padres. Let's check the lineups. So very annoyingly, um, the matchups don't look too bad. So it's very, very frustrating. But Tamar Johnson will lead us off at shortstop. Vajeo will bat second at third. It is Evan White uh, batting third. He's at first base. Sergilio cleans up in right field. It is Ilya Jimenez in left field batting five. Bo Bichette at second base in a slump. Um, but hopefully he'll come out of that soon. He He's at second base. It is, uh, it is Heron in center field batting seven. Jeff is the catcher bats eight. Brandon Barrera goes on the mound for us today. Uh, he is up against Jack Perkins for them. Uh, Jack Perkins this season, ERA of just 
and I mean just under 4, but a whip of 111, ERA plus of 109, a war of 0.04. Um, so it's going to be an interesting battle, this one, but we have to come out on top. So here we are back at Colorado. Tremel to lead them off, batting 228. Barrera on the mound. And uh, like I say, he's been in good form. He's been he's been pitching quite well for us this season. Um, but we, uh, yeah, this is a big, big game. And, uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. I think with the pitching, if we if we get everybody back fit, and as we know, that is a massive if for us for some reason, uh, as Mitchell comes in to replace the struck-out Trammell, an 0-2 pitch on him, and that should be out at first. Yes, it is. But if we can get sort of our first-choice team on the park for sort of the rest of the season once everybody comes back, I do think we're, with the addition of Snell, we're now a very, very good team. Um, but it's just a matter of getting everybody fit and sort of playing something towards their best. Now, Tamar Johnson comes in to lead us off, batting 283 this season. He pops it up. And uh, that's a first pitch out for him. Not ideal. It brings Vajeo up, batting 355. He is very quietly having, I mean, a. a Season from heaven, isn't he? But he grounds out there to Tatis Jr. And it brings Evan White up, who's batting 299. Not often he drops below 300 with a batting average. Um, but he's going to drop a little bit further away there as that is popped up. And we'll end the first innings. Not much there for either team, unfortunately. Barrera comes back out to face Zunica, who is batting 248 this season. It's a full count on him, and he strikes him out. Excellent stuff. It's uh, Trent Grisham coming in now, batting 270 and in a hot streak. A 1-2 pitch. Barrera with another strikeout, looking good. And Manny Machado comes up now. He's batting 235 this season, an 0-1 pitch. I seem to remember him doing quite well against us all the time, but he's grounded that out to Tamar, and that'll end the top of the second. It brings Andy Sergilio to the plate, batting 313, an 0-1 pitch. And Sergilio again pops it up. And that'll be one away. It'll bring Eloy Jimenez up to bat, leading the league in home runs, having a very, very good season indeed. It's a 1-2 pitch here, though. I don't particularly like where this is headed. And Jimenez grounds into the shift, and that will be two away for Bo Bichette. Now, since last episode, Bo Bichette has got his 500th career RBI, um, so that's good to see for him. He's not going to add to that tally, though, as he pops up another one. And... Well, not much to do with the bat so far through two innings. Barrera comes back out to face Meyer, who's batting 254 this season. It's a 3-1 pitch. We don't want a base runner. And we don't get one as Vajeo fields it over to first and one away. It brings in Arias now, who is batting 183 this season. A 2-2 pitch on him. And there's another strikeout for Barrera. Pitcher comes up to bat. He's only batting 167. It's another 2-2 pitch. And it is the end of the uh, perfect game, which is very early to say, but the pitcher with annoyingly a two-out double. And, uh, well, that'll go back to the top of the order now for Tremel, who is 0 for 1. Can Barrera end the innings here? First pitch swing gets away from the catcher. That go-ahead run goes over to third, and if it, the pitcher scores a run, I will be annoyed. Tremel, 2-2 two -two pitch. There's a strikeout, and Barrera ends the third. All right. Jimmy Heron comes in the bat now, batting 320 this season, a 2-2 pitch. Jimmy Heron rips it into left field, and that is going to be a leadoff single for our center fielder. Let's see if we can work with this now. Now, Heron, not a great base runner, not a, really a stealing threat. Jeffers comes in the bat, batting 284. Jeffers strikes out. That's going to bring Barrera up. Now, he's uh, batting, he's 4 for 46 this season, maybe a bunt, mate. That's what he does. It's straight down the first base line. It's a very good one. Oh, and he beats it as well. Excellent stuff. Jimmy Heron goes to second. Barrera bunts himself aboard, and Tamar Johnson now comes up to bat. It's a full count on Tamar, and he whoa, strikes out. Two away, two on for Vajeo, who is 0 for 1. Can he give us a lead? It's a 1-2 pitch. Come on, Vajeo. He grounds it to third. Oh, it's an error. It's an error, and that loads the bases for Evan White. Evan White now with a chance. He's 0 for 1, 2 out, loaded bases, 3-1, and he walks in a run. We take the lead, still bases loaded, and it is Mr. MVP, Andy Sergilio.
He's 0 for 1 today. It's a first pitch swing and Sergilio has he? I think he has. He has. Andy Sergilio with a grand slam. 467 feet straight over center field. And it's five runs in the third. And Andy Sergilio blows this game to pieces. It is Eloy Jimenez coming into bat now with the bases emptied. He strikes out. But Andy Sergilio with a home run, with a grand slam, gives us a five-run lead. And it is Barrera coming out now to face Mitchell, who is 0 for 1. I think I just woke the cut up. Sorry, Gus. It was very exciting, though. That's popped straight up. And the pitcher makes the play eventually. And that is one away for Tatis Jr. He's 0 for 1. A 3-1 pitch. And Tatis Jr. up the middle for a one-out single. All right, runner at first for Zunica, who is 0 for 1. Another full count. That is popped up. Bo is there. He makes the play. Runner goes back to first. That's 2 away. And Trent Grisham now to the plate, who's 0 for 1. It's a 1-2 pitch. Barrera strikes him out. That ends the top of the fourth. And we still have our five-run lead. Now, can we add to it as Bo Bichette comes in to face the new man? Uh, I'm not even going to try. Mag Jeffers uh, it's a 2-1 pitch. Bo has grounded that out to second. And that is one away. In comes Jimmy Heron. Now, of course, he got us underway with a single last innings. So he's one for one today. Uh, he's going to be one for two now as that uh, pops up into right field. That is two out. And Jeffers to the plate. Now, he is 0 for 1. What can Ryan Jeffers do? He has hit it well. Is it going over center field? It is. And Ryan Jeffers delivers the two-out double. Barrera will come into bat now. Is he going to try and bunt himself aboard again? You never know. He's one for one today, of course. A 2-2 pitch, and Barrera, unsurprisingly, perhaps, strikes out. And that ends the fourth. Still with that five-run lead, though. Barrera to face Manny Machado. Now, of course, his error was uh, greatly appreciated and it contributed to that five-run third. He gets a single up the middle. And the leadoff man is aboard for Mayer, who is 0 for 1. It's a 1-1 one -one pitch. That is... Pops straight up. Jeffers is there. Runner goes back to first. One away. Arias to the plate now. He is 0 for 1. A 2-2 pitch. And there's another strikeout. Old Barrera is having a good day, isn't he, so far anyway. Pitcher comes in the bat. He is, uh, what's he, 1 for 12 so far this season. 1 for 13 now. Another strikeout for Barrera. And that ends the top of the fifth. And we are still 5-0 up. Tamar Johnson will lead us off. 0 for 2 he is today. It's an 0-1 pitch. And Tamar Johnson into the shift and out at first. One away. For Hayo, who's 0 for 2. Doesn't happen to him very often. Can he get a, uh, a hit third time around? He cannot. He pops that up. That is 2 away. And Evan White will have a bat now. Now, of course, he walked in a run last time, didn't he? It's a full count this time. And Evan White grounds at the third. And that will do it for the fifth. But we still have that five-run lead. Barrera will continue to Taylor Tremel, who's 0 for 2. It's another 1-2 pitch, and it's another strikeout for Barrera. Nine he has now through 5.1 innings. Grant Mitchell, sorry, Garrett Mitchell comes in. It's an 0-2. And that is a ground ball for Tamar Johnson, who makes the play for two away. And it's Tatis Jr., who is 1 for 2. In a hot streak. First pitch swing. And that is going to be caught out there by Sergilio. No, it's dropping in. It's a two-out single. And Zunica comes back in. He is 0 for 2. It's an 0-2 pitch. And Zunica absolutely crushes it. It stays in. Off the fence on the full, though. Can Heron stop the run from scoring? He cannot. So it's an RBI double for Zunica. The lead is cut to 5-1. And Grisham comes in now to face Edwin Kalina. And that's a shame. That was a really good outing there for uh, for Barrera. Hopefully the bullpen isn't going to go and stuff it all up this time like I did last episode. And that is a decent start there for Kalina. He ends the innings. And, uh, well, 5-1 is still the lead. Though we are being out hit. Sergilio, who of course hit the grand slam last time up. It's a 1-0, uh, sorry, an 0-1 pitch. And has Sergilio done that again? No. Right field is camped underneath it. And uh, that is a very simple catch out there for him. In comes Eloy Jimenez, who's 0 for 2. A 2-0 pitch. Jimenez pops it up. And that will be 2 away to bring up Bo Bichette, who is 0 for 2 today. 
Another 2-0 pitch. Can Bo get onto something? No, he cannot. And you've got to say, other than that uh, uh, that five-run third, we really haven't done much with the bat, have we? Kalina will continue. And him in his 6.75 ERA to Manny Machado, who is one for two today. A 2-2 pitch. And Edwin Kalina with a strikeout. Kalina was a very reliable pitcher for a while there, wasn't he, out of the bullpen? He's just, uh, just fallen away a touch. A 3-1. That is uh, slapped into left field, and that'll be a single. Yes, just a single for Mayer. In comes Arias now, who's 0 for 2. A 3-1 pitch, and that is going to be another hit. It should just be the one. Yes, it is, but one out, runners at second and first, and you start to get a little bit worried because we know what Kalina is capable of doing. In comes Olivarius, who is 0 for 6 this season. Pinch hitter, 0-2 pitch. There's another strikeout. That's a big out, isn't it? Tremel comes back in 0-3 to face Robbie Ray. Let's see what Robbie Ray can do. We haven't really seen much of him. He's just a, a bit part player in the bullpen now. He gets a strikeout. That's the Robbie Ray we know and love. And we stretch with a four-run lead. It is 5-1 to the Rockies. Carlos Martinez comes in to pitch for them. ERA of 235 for him. He's going to face Jimmy Heron, who's one for two. And the 2-2 pitch is popped up into center field. This is going to bring Ryan Jeffers to the plate, who is one for two today. Now that should do it for Kalina. You would imagine will be pinch hitting as Jeffers gets himself thrown out at first. And it is going to be Tappy up, batting 299 this season, coming in for the pinch hit. It's a full count, two out, no one on, and Tapia draws the walk. Mr. Reliable, old Ramel Tapia, isn't he? Tamar Johnson comes in. He's 0 for 3. Now's your chance, Tamar. There goes Tapia, and he gets there. So we have a full count runner in scoring position. Come on, Tamar. He draws the walk. Two on with one out. Two out, I should say. With Vajeo to the plate, who's 0 for 3. Has he been saving up for this moment? It's a 2-2 pitch, and Vajeo lines it out to third. And that ends the seventh. And still, we don't really have anything going after that third innings. Gavin Hollywell comes in. ERA of 450. Only just in, obviously, with injuries to uh, first-choice players. That is well hit. It is over Heron in center field. And that could be a triple. It is a triple. And that is not the way we wanted to start the eighth. Oh, come on, Hollywell. In comes Tatis Jr., who is two for three. Not the man we want at the plate just now. And is that staying in? Sergilio's going back. He's almost no chance of stopping the run, though. A sack fly from Tatis draws them another run closer. Hollywell to face Zunica now, with no one on and one out. It's another full count. Come on, Gav. No, he walks him. No, he doesn't. Oh, what about that for a curveball? Two away. Trent Grisham to the plate, who's 0 for 3. Come on, Gav. End the innings, mate. End the innings. He does. He gives up one, but uh, we can just about deal with that, I think. Evan White to the plate. He's 0 for 2. With, of course, that RBI walk as well, and he has grounded it to second base, and that'll be one away. Andy Sigilio, who appears to have, uh, well, at least given us a chance to win this game. He comes in, and Sigilio adds to it. A second home run. That is crushed. <laughs> Absolutely crushed over right field. A 40th home run of the season for Andy Sigilio, 426 feet. It's 6 to 2. We've got ourselves an insurance run. And in comes Eloy Jimenez now, who is 0 for 3. A full count, and Jimenez strikes out for two away. And that brings Bo Bichette in to face another new pitcher in Uquodi. I guess you'd pronounce that. The array for him is over 5. Can Bo get himself a hit? He is 0 for 3 so far today. It's a 3-1 pitch. It's a good chance, Bo. He gets a good jump out of the batter's box, and he does get himself an infield hit. Now, he's quick is Bo. Is he going to try and steal himself to second? Jimmy Heron comes up to the plate. He's 1 for 3. An 0-2 pitch. Heron strikes out. That ends the 8th, and we go and have a pitch. It's going to be Edwin Diaz. Yes, it is, to face Manny Machado, and let's see if Diaz can close out this one for us. Now, since last episode, Diaz has racked up his 1,000th uh, career strikeout, and that is, uh, well, cancelling out the Sigilio home run. Edwin, man, come on. It's 6'3 now, 388 feet over right field. It wasn't as good as uh, Sigilio's home run. 
Diaz will face Maya now. Yeah, and I was saying he's just racked, he's racked up over a thousand career strikeouts, which isn't bad for Jesus Christ. Diaz. He's not going to do it again, is he? It's 6 4, and there's no one out in the top of the ninth. And you look at the hits, I mean, you'd argue that uh, this isn't necessarily what they don't deserve. Arias comes in an 0 2 pitch. Come on, Edwin. There we go. All right, he's, he's got himself underway now, has he? Josh Naylor comes in the pinch hit. He's batting 181 this season. It's a 2 2 pitch. That's a ground ball. That'll be two away. And was Diaz just keeping it interesting for us? Tremel comes in. He's 0 for 4. Let's keep the O. It's a 2 2 pitch. We do keep the O, and we have avoided a sweep. And uh, we've maybe been a little bit lucky there with that as well. Well, if we're looking for stars of the game, Andy Sigilio, two home runs, five RBIs, the Grand Slam as well, of course. And, uh, well, he, he got us across the line there, didn't he? But uh, certainly on the mound, uh, I mean, Brandon Barrera, what a start that was from him. Uh, the 82 uh, prospect, he's better than that, surely, isn't he? Um, he's having a, a good year for us, but uh, he certainly showed he is maybe someone we can rely on when we start getting into the postseason here. So excellent stuff. But guys, that will do it for today. Quick look at the uh, uh, standings. Seven and a half games back, late August. It's not, not doable, but it's certainly going to be tough, isn't it? But we'll do our best to run them down. We really needed to do better in that series. At home to them as well. We couldn't afford to lose three of those four, could we? But uh, we'll be back next time. When do we come back? Um, if there's a chance, if there's a chance, we might come back for the for another Padre series. Um, I th that is where our season lies, isn't it, really? That, it's just us and them in the divisional race. It's uh, the Giants, yeah, they're, they're, so they're done. So it's between us and them. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll come back for another series there against them if it's close. If it's not going to be close, then what we'll do is we'll just skip ahead to the All-Star, to the All-Star, to the Wild Card game. Um, or if it's going to be close for the Wild Card game, then we'll come back. You know, we'll come back when it's sort of meaningful again. But if we're within sort of four, maybe even five games, given that... Um, there's another series to come here. We'll come back for that one. And as I said, if not, it'll be uh, the next meaningful game. Until then, guys, open Aussie Villain. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.